dismiss your college loans. That's one thing you can't dismiss with a bankruptcy. So you're going to be a debt slave for the rest of your life. You know, if you're in the middle class, you don't need that brainwashing. If you take a business class on return and investment, you know, you can clump out of college completely. Just forget the whole thing. But this is a, a great article. You should take a look at it. And he even has a publicity stunt that he's working on, uh, which basically will, with parody, try to make the point. Uh, demanding racial equality for 30 million Asians of different nationalities that they be brought into the U.S. and integrated into the national security welfare state. And that's exactly what it is. It's a national security welfare state. It's the warfare welfare state. But, of course, now the warfare aspect of it is turning inward. Just looking at some of these other headlines. Hundreds of immigrants to be sheltered at Border Patrol Training Academy. Uh, the immigration reform prospects are dead, says Luis Gutierrez. Pelosi scoffs at the House GOP lawsuit. ICE removal operations director confirms years before illegals will have their cases heard. They've got a backlog of so many hundreds of thousands of cases that, of course, they're looking at this as essentially their paperwork that allows them to stay in the United States. And then we look at this, uh, this last one here, Europe's migrant influx. They say we need help and we don't know where from. See, it's not just America. This is a global plan. It is about regional disorder, regional consolidation. We see them moving ahead with these plans with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, with the Transatlantic Partnership, where they're replacing democratically elected governments with these kind of NAFTA-style tribunals where multinational corporations, not corporations, not like uh, somebody who has, has incorporated down the street for his small business. This is only multinational corporations that are going to get this kind of protection. Now, there's also some nanny state news and uh, today, which is uh, a little bit lighter. Uh, they actually suffered a blow in the New York court. Uh, courts are actually had a pretty good week this week for Liberty. Uh, this is just a New York Court of Appeals, but it is the highest court in the state. Uh, this is an article up on Infowars.com from Kurt Nemo. Nanny State suffers a blow in New York. The court overturns a soda ban from Michael uh, Bloomberg. They say he exceeded his authority. Do you think? <laughs> I mean, the ban, as he points out, didn't apply to drinks that were sold in grocery stores. It didn't apply to diet sodas. It didn't apply to drinks with more than 70% fruit juice or drinks that contained alcohol. So he's just got his little list. I guess, you know, when you're going into a restaurant, he doesn't want you to get too big a glass of soda or get refills with it. Whatever. I mean, if you're a dictator, you can make any kind of arbitrary rules you want. But look at where this is going. Ironically, this is a, a follow-up story that also came out today from Bloomberg looking at another aspect of the nanny state. And this is a Bloomberg news service. Here's the headline. Hospitals soon to see donuts to cigarette charges for health. In other words, you eat donuts, you smoke cigarettes, you're going to get surcharges on your insurance. This is something we told people 20 years ago when Hillary Clinton, as first lady, decided that she was going to take over the health care uh, of the entire country and federalize it with Hillary Care. And we were telling people if you allow the state to become the single insurer in the name of efficiency. And of course, that's not going to make anything efficient when you've got a monopoly. Everybody knows that. But that was what Hillary Clinton was trying to sell at the time. We said if you allow them to take over health care completely, they're going to be coming into your kitchen and telling you what you can eat. You've got too much fat here. You've got too much sugar there. Why? Because they own you. You are a liability on their balance sheet. And that's what's happening now. This whole thing with Obamacare is really more of a fascist spin on it than Hillary's, which was full-out socialism. It's one of the reasons that he got it through. It's one of the reasons that it started with Mitt Romney in Massachusetts. It's a fascist plan to make gov uh, money for the insurance companies. And, of course, the insurance companies want to keep their profits. So what are they going to do? They're going to get the hospitals looking at your life. What they say in here is the idea is to use big data and predictive models to think about population health and then to drill down to the individual levels to find someone is running into trouble. We can reach out and try to help him. Remember that uh, song from Simon and Garfunkel, Mrs. Robinson? Uh, we'd like to know a little bit about you for our files. We'd like to help you learn to help yourself. Look around you. All you see are sympathetic eyes. The nanny state comes to you that way. But then they want to uh, give you a call and tell you, um, we have a problem with your diet. 
We have a problem with your lifestyle. You need to change that or there'll be penalties. We're going to be right back. We're going to talk about economics and we're going to talk about another control point, and that's transportation. Stay with us. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners here today. Visit MyCreditCardKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and claim yours for free. It's the same knife you've seen in the airline magazines for $29.95, but today it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. MyCreditCardKnife.com, MyCreditCardKnife.com. Go now. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. A sudden change in the wind. The day grows dark. As ominous clouds move in and lightning begins to carve arcs in the sky, and you realize you are not prepared. I am telling you to yes, take, take cover. The number of intense storms is increasing exponentially in the U.S. Tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, and droughts are happening with greater magnitude and frequency. If you are choosing to rely on the government to save you... And no one's coming to help them. You could be dead wrong. The first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to My Patriot Supply. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48. Visit us online or call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today. Remember, before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. You've talked about it for a while. Now it's time to get your family the emergency readiness pack it deserves. And there's one site to turn to, TopPackGear.com. From large to small, you'll find kits for every purpose, and all of them can be customized by you. TopPackGear.com offers the best pre-built packs the Internet has to offer. Assembled using only high-quality products vetted by pros and chosen for the best balance of quality and value. Prepare, endure, prevail with TopPackGear.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Appropriate music for our, with our next topic here. We're talking about something very dark, and Karina Barana definitely sets the right mood here, guys. There's an article up on InfoWars today from Mikhail Thalen. SWAT team refuses public records request and says, we are not a government agency. 
to which the ACLU says either it's a public entity subject to public records laws or what it's doing is illegal. Now, this is a regional SWAT team in Massachusetts refusing to release information on raid statistics, saying that it's a private organization. It's the Northeastern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council, NIMLEC, and uh, NIMLEC can't have it both ways, says the ACLU of Massachusetts. Either it's a public entity subject to public record laws or it's, it, what it's doing is illegal. They say if police agencies hide behind a wall of secrecy, the public can't judge for itself whether the officials are acting appropriately or whether policy changes are needed. See, that's the problem with everything that the government is doing. Everything that the government is doing, no matter what agency we talk to, they don't want to talk to us. They tell us, go talk to our public information officer, go send them a, uh, give them a phone call, send them an email, whatever. They never get back to us. If we show up to talk to them, they get angry with us because we're practicing quote unquote ambush journalism. Well, you know what? We're going to expose it because we're not going to have a government that thinks that it's above the law, that thinks that it can operate in secrecy. Whether you're talking about an airport or any kind of municipal organization or whether you're talking about the CIA, there needs to be transparency. There needs to be oversight. There needs to be information to the public. Well, we have another article up on InfoWars, 10 facts about the swatification of America that everybody should know. And here are those 10 facts. Here's the top 10 facts about SWAT teams. Number one, in 1980, there were approximately 3,000 SWAT raids in the United States. Now, there are 80,000 SWAT raids per year in this country, about 30 times. Number two, 79% of the time, SWAT teams are deployed to private homes. Number three, 50% of the victims of SWAT raids are either black or Latino. Number four, in 65% of SWAT deployments, a battering ram, a boot, or some sort of explosive device is used to gain forced entry into a home. Number five, 62% of all SWAT raids involve a search for drugs. See, this is all started with the war on drugs. Now they're going to expand this into the war on terror. Six, in at least 36% of all SWAT raids, no contraband of any kind is found by the police. Number seven, in cases where it's suspected there's a weapon in the home, police only find a weapon 35% of the time. Number eight, more than 100 American families have their homes raided by SWAT teams every single day. This was an important point that was made yesterday when I talked to Cheryl Chumley in the book Police State USA. We sell it here at InfoWarsStore.com. She was saying there's a perception of a lot of people that these things are few and far between. She knows better. We know better. When we're looking at this on InfoWars, there's so much of this out there that we can't cover it all. So you only hear about the most egregious cases where they come in and they throw a flashbang grenade into the crib of an 18-month-old uh, 18 month old baby, uh, severely, severely damaging that child, blowing up his face, blowing up his rib cage to the extent that uh, you know, his ribs are exposed. Number nine, only 7% of all SWAT deployments are for hostage, barricade, or active shooter scenarios. See that? Only 7%. And that's the article we're going to talk to Paul Joseph Watson about. We see a tweet that was put out that her guy says, well, when ISIS comes a calling in America, they're going to forget about all these uh, babies that have flashbangs, uh, grenades thrown into their cribs. Well, only 7% of SWAT deployments are for hostage barricade or active shooter scenarios. And the last one, number 10, even small towns are getting SWAT teams now. 30 years ago, only 25% of communities with populations between 25 and 50,000 people had a SWAT team. Now, 80% of the small teams do. And so we're going to have Paul Joseph Watson joining us in the next segment about this article that he put up today. Law enforcement firms says nobody will complain about the militarized police when ISIS attack. And I asked the question, how are we going to tell the difference between the SWAT teams and the terrorists? How do we know the difference? They both wear masks. They're both throwing grenades at people. They both kill innocent people. They both brag about it. They both use violence to achieve political ends, and they both say they aren't government agents, when actually we know they both are, the terrorists, including the SWAT team. So we're going to talk to Paul Joseph Watson right after the break. We're going to find out what's behind this arrogance, and we have a very optimistic take on the future. 
So we're going to talk about that as well. We can roll this thing back. We can do it peacefully. We can have a revolution that results in more individual liberty, not in a police state. Stay with us. We're on the march. The M4.